Building a killer brand is about how you need to set a position for yourself for whatever audience it is you're looking to choose. Getting to this point where you are identified as a killer brand takes a lot of steps in creating an identity, because that's what you're doing. You're creating your own unique business identity. But you've got to have something that's a differentiator, that makes you truly unique and worth the extra money. So what's a killer brand? Anybody care to venture? Ooh. Okay, I'm going to tell you what it is. All right. Killer brand is one that basically is so unique and irresistible to the audience that it's targeting that it virtually owns the market. Okay? There, there's no, I mean, it's the first thing that comes to mind. It, it's, regardless of what the other competitors are in the niche, they are almost irrelevant by way of comparison. And I'll say that when you have a killer brand, frequently the product becomes referred to when you're talking about the name of the product becomes referred to. And I'll give you an example. Um, well, Kleenex, perfect. I was, I was looking for a Kleenex. I couldn't find one. How many of you have ever gone to someone and said, you got a Kleenex on you? Would you have not taken it if they handed you a Scott tissue? <laughs> of course not. No, you'll take, you'll take, the, they are facial tissues. But Kleenex has become sort of synonymous with the product. Q-tip also, exactly. There, there, I'm sure there are other, I don't even know of any other. Yeah, Xerox, perfect, another one. They, uh, Xerox kind of entered the office machine market with the copier. And it became so that when you needed a copy, you'd say, could you Xerox that for me? Even if you happen to be using a Minolta, you still got a Xerox out of it. So that's the killer brand. That's, that's the concept whereby you are identified with your niche. If, if you're the person who's the face of your business, if you are the one that interacts with the clients up front or the, the prospects, let's call them, if you are the one that prepares the proposals, if you're the one that does the follow-up, if you're the one that comes into the house and does the magic that you do, you're the brand. So whatever you, whatever you are known for, whatever you are known by, it's still you. It comes back to it. And even if you are the face of an organization, if people deal with you primarily, well, it's, it's you. They, they're going to they're gonna say you're the brand. You've got to make sure that, that the foundation of your killer brand is something that you can consistently deliver. So as you're concocting this, since you're the face of the brand, you've got to be the one who can bring it to the, the, take it to the street, so to speak and deliver it consistently so there's no mixed message there, right? The structural components of a killer brand. There are, there are support things. And if you can see on this little Greek temple we got going on here, killer brand is lit up on the neon marquee, and then we got these four columns. One says gestation, one says foundation, one says integration, and one says correlation. Okay. Gestation. How many of your mothers here? Okay, then you know what that's all about, right? <laughs> you have to conceive of the idea. You have to think about it. You have to develop it. And this is what I call, this is from basically taken right out of my book. This is what we call the big brand vision. What is it? What is it going to be? How are you going to take this out into the marketplace, recognizing what your competencies are, and execute it? All right, foundation is what I like to call, these are the crazy, distinctive, irresistible, cornerstone characteristics that when combined, when all added together, uniquely identify your killer brand as the one that delivers on its big promise. Integration. This is where you take all of those things, all of these, the, the, the foundation, the idea, the concept, and you integrate it throughout your business so that every little thing you do, everything you deploy, is in sync with this, that, that basically lives up to the expectations you're setting for your audience. So your marketing materials, your correspondence, the way you present yourself to your, your prospects or the people you serve, all needs to be integrated with whatever the promise is. And then correlation. This is where you basically nail down the position of your brand in the marketplace. So that in the consumer's mind, you become irrefutably identified with whatever it is you do, the service. Whether if it's interior redesign, if it's staging, whatever it is you do, you're the first person that comes to mind. But what you're doing here, the idea of positioning, is it's, it's up here. It's not on the shelves. Because until it's up here, they're not going to pay attention to you on the shelves. Okay? And my, my term is... Mindshare begets market share. 
Think about that. Okay? You will not own your niche. You will not be a presence in the market until you are top of mind, until you're the first thing that comes to mind for what you do. Okay? What defines a position? Is it the item itself or is it the space around it? Well, it's a bit of both, isn't it? I mean, this stand that I got here, this is clearly defined by everything that's around it, even though the stand is, is unique in and of itself. So we talk about this with respect to your, your branding efforts. Recognize what's around you in terms of perhaps competition or related industries, and you want to make sure that you are positioning yourself so that you stand out relative to your surroundings. That's the concept. The, again, unique selling proposition. It is a distinct appealing idea that sets your business apart from the Me Too competition. From everybody else who's out there saying, well, I'm a stager, I'm an interior redesigner, okay? They're, as we said before, they're not necessarily designed to appeal to a broad market. So your USP, your unique selling proposition, is going to be very much specific to the niche you want to occupy. Your entire marketing and operational success needs to be built on your USP. And you know, we're kind of like recapping a little bit of what happened before. You want to adopt the USP that addresses a void in the marketplace. Don't try to go out there and compete head on with people that are already doing something. It's, it's a very, very tough road to hoe. Take a look at what needs are going unfulfilled. I'm going to give you a couple of examples of, of things. And these may not necessarily be ultra specific to your business. They're a little bit more general. But think along these lines. Uh, advice and assistance. How about top of the line service? You're not going for the average. You, you are the best and you demand a high price and you don't work with people below a certain dollar thing, period. End of story. How about service above and beyond what would be considered normal. Lay out an incredible promise and then exceed that. So that they're already like thinking, wow, I'm going to be just completely amazed by this performance. And then you go one step beyond it. Service with a satisfaction guarantee. If they're not happy with what you said you do based upon the expectations you set, they don't owe you a cent. That's, a, that's kind of a risky proposition to do, but if you're really good, if you know you can deliver the goods, well, then it's not all that risky, is it? This is a process, ladies. This is not an overnight thing. And you may at times go, what am I doing this for and all this? And I'm going to say that if you have a commitment to your business, you have to do this. You have to have a commitment about always moving forward, becoming better at what you do and being willing to seek out opportunities to do it you know, wherever. I mean, the alternative is you sentence yourself to the commoditization conspiracy. You become one of many, sort of a faceless, indistinguishable entity in your field that probably very few people are going to seek out. Okay? It makes your job a lot harder. When you are well known, people come to you. When you think about your business and you think about setting your hours and managing your time. Do you want to be known as someone who's always available or someone who's worth waiting for? Big difference. And if you got the goods, if you got the USP that everybody is talking about, they will, they'll come to you because they know that you solve the problem like nobody else. Thank you very much. Very much appreciated. Thank you. I just attended the ADA conference session with Doug Gruwati, and I learned a lot. I've never heard him before. But what I learned the most was that I need to narrow down my niche. I'm working on three different focus areas now, and according to Doug, I need to narrow that. So I'm thinking about it already. Great job. Hi, my name is Elisa, and I just heard Doug speak at the Association of Design Education Conference. And he really helped me realize that I really need to identify my target market and how I want to market to them. We just watched Doug. Um, do this presentation and I had an aha moment where I realized that I already had a USP but I wasn't really utilizing it and that was the convenience factor that I offer my clients so I'm going to capitalize on that and put, put better effort into marketing myself that way. 
This is our sixth Association of Design Education conference, and we always try to pick uh, someone in the afternoon who is really going to motivate us from a business perspective. And I have to say, this year, I think Doug, Doug was fabulous. He is by far the most energetic, um, information-filled, dynamic presenter. I cannot recommend him enough as a presenter for large, small, whatever kind of a group you have, business owners, corporate uh, people in corporate, whatever. He is great. He is fabulous. You, you, you get so much incredible information. Doug's the guy.